We forgot to film an intro for the last video and I've already changed my shirt, so I don't know what we talked about, but yeah. <laughs> Roll clip. <laughs> Done. Perfect. A couple of months ago, we made a video about how Marlon Brando didn't give the slightest whiff of a fuck, and we found it hilarious. So, today we're going to talk about a person who gave even less of a shit than that. Old dirty bastard of the Wu-Tang Clan. What do you guys do to get back to the community? Nothing. <laughs> For anyone unfamiliar with the Wu-Tang Clan, all you really need to know is that Wu-Tang ain't nothing to fuck with. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with! And also that, up until his death in 2004, Old Dirty Bastards was one of their most prolific and talented members. However, as Old Dirty Bastards' own Wikipedia page points out, his talent was often overshadowed by his numerous run-ins with the law. So Brad, am I right in thinking that you don't really know all that much about the Wu-Tang Clan? No, I wouldn't say I was particularly familiar with their work. All you really need to know about Wu-Tang can be learned from the game Wu-Tang Taste the Pain, or as it is known to our American viewers, Wu-Tang Shaolin Style, which is, and I'm not making this up, a video game where you play as members of the Wu-Tang Clan and you beat the shit out of ninjas. And this is also true, that game was built from the code of a game called Thrill Kill. Have you ever heard of Thrill Kill? It was a game for the PS1 that was banned for being too violent. <laughs> That game never got released, so they took the shell of that game, reskinned it into a Wu Tang game, and then released it, and then put a story mode in where you beat people up with like ninja weapons. Why do these rappers have their own game? Because they're fucking awesome, that's why. Basically, almost every member of the Wu Tang Clan they just fucking love like um, old like kung fu movies, and a lot of their lyrics are inspired by kung fu movies. And almost everything I know about any member of the Wu Tang Clan is just based on things I learned in that game. The really cool thing about Wu Tang Shaolin style, though, is that the actual members of the Wu Tang Clan decided on what weapons their character would use and decided on ones that best suited how they rap. <laughs> so, for example, um, the Jizzer uses a sword, a, a sword that's on a chain. Yeah. And they say, oh yeah, that represents his smooth flowing lyrics. There's, Whereas, there's a guy called the Jizzer. Of course there's a guy called the Jizzer. The Rizza, the Jizzer, the old dirty Bizzer. Keep up, mate. Uh, Method Man uses a sledgehammer and they say, yeah, his sledgehammer's representative of how he smashes people with his strong lyrics and burns. The yellow sky. So I'm assuming you could find on YouTube, like to put a clip now of all of the executions in that game, because some of them are fucking hilarious. Like, uh, Method Man with his big sledgehammer has got a way to rise it like a donkey. So he gets the sledgehammer and goes, uh, uh, and you can kill people doing that. Dig it. The best part about the game as well, though, is because old PlayStation games work to CDs, so I even had one of their albums, so I used to listen to it when my mum wasn't in. Wu-Tang. Moving back to Old Dirty Bastard and how few fucks he gave, I think nothing encapsulates that better than that time he leapt out of a second story window while being chased by three Rottweilers. Yeah, I think we're gonna need a bit of context on that. I completely understand. Okay, so the end of the story is old dirty bastard leaping out of a window being chased by Rottweilers. Yeah. Right? That's the end of the story. The start of the story is at 2 a.m. he walks out of his front door to buy ice cream. So you're probably thinking, Carl, how does a story start with a man buying ice cream and end with him leaping out of a second story window being chased by many Rottweilers? Well, what happened was Old Dirty Bastard saw a suspicious looking car following him and tried to leap over a fence to get away from it and landed on a big group of Rottweilers who chased him around the garden for about five minutes. Obviously, at this point, well, he's high as balls on drugs, so he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. The person who owned the house heard this, opened the front door, old dirty bastard ran in, ran upstairs, and decided in his drug fuel state that the best way to escape that situation was to leap out of the window and broke like three ribs in one of his arms. I'd like to point out as well, that's not the, there's other versions of that story, and one of them says he just crawled through the doggy door and then jumped out of the second story window, which I think is far more hilarious. Because I like to think the person was still in bed. Went, what the fuck is that? And just looked out of the, like, onto their landing and saw a rapper run and just leap out of a window and go. <laughs> in my head, the people who own the house knew it was old dirty bastard and was like, oh, ODB, <laughs> classic ODB. This is the third time this week. Why does so, he always jump over our looking out the window, he's in a big crumpled heap. It's like, did it happen again? He's like, yeah, it did. I'm really sorry. But Brad, the story doesn't end there. 
So obviously the police came and interviewed ODB while he's in the hospital recovering from his broken bones and dog bite wounds. And asked him, so what happened? I was followed by a suspicious car. How many drugs have you done? Well, quite a lot. Sounds like drug fuel paranoia to us. Uh, we're not gonna look into it. We hope you get better. He checked himself out of hospital early, because of course, and then 20 minutes after walking out of the front door of the hospital, got shot in the back by a guy who'd been following him for three days. So he was absolutely right. He was being followed. Do you know what's the best part? Even though he had a bullet wound and broken arm, he checked himself out of hospital again a few days later. So he broke he broke his arm or arms. What, was it one or two? I think he just broke a lot of bones. So he broke a lot of bones and then three days later checked, checked himself, himself out, out, got shot. 20 minutes after walking out of the hospital, proving that he was being followed, yeah. that he was absolutely right to be paranoid, and then checked himself out of hospital again a few days later. It sounds like he should just fuck. stay in hospital. He probably was, but this is ODB we're talking about. He didn't give a fuck. But this isn't the only time that ODB just up and disappeared. And in the year 2000, he just walked out of court-mandated rehab because he didn't feel like it. So where did he go? Right, you're not going to believe this. Despite the fact he was actively being hunted down by the police. Do you know where old Dirty Bastard decided to go? Where? To a Wu-Tang Clan concert to promote one of their albums. <laughs> And I'm not fucking making this up. Do you know how the police caught him? Was he on stage? No, they found him in a car park signing autograph for fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I'm just going to sum this up so we're all crystal clear here. Old Dirty Bastard was caught when the police heard reports of a man matching his exact description standing in a car park signing his name for fans wearing a t-shirt with his face on it. You imagine the police officer who turns up to arrest him, he's like, are you all dirty bastard? And he stood there signing his name on an album with his face on it while fans are around him taking pictures. He's like, no. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I love you, ODP. He's the fucking best. He's just taking a fuck. Do you know what else he did though? And I am absolutely not making this up. So he got into trouble at another concert because the crowd started rioting. And do you know what ODB thought would be the best way to calm the crowd down? He just pulled out a pistol and fired it into the air and then ran out of the building. There's another story about him where after he got a $45,000 advance from his record company, he was still technically on food stamps at the time. So he got a limo and drove down to the welfare office and walked in and got his welfare check and MTV filmed it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, just sit in the car, okay? Yeah, good old <laughs> he did not give a fuck. Can you imagine for a second being the person in the welfare office? He's like, all right, these people coming in. I really need this money to live. And ODB just swaggers in, like with $45,000 burning a hole in his back pocket, going, yeah, I need this. And he walks outside and gets in a limo and fucks off. I didn't think it would work. I swear. But it worked. And we got food stamps. Oh. Well fucking done. You can't, there's nothing, there's no other reaction other than just. So you're not a fan of um, Wu-Tang Clan at all, really? You're not really listening to any of the music? No, nothing. Chances either. are, though, you've heard an ODB song. So are you familiar with the song Ghetto Superstar? Yeah. He sings the rap on that. And I think this is the most perfect example of like, how few fucks he had. Do you know why Old Dirty Bastard is even on that song in the first place? He just walked into the studio because he was like lost and he didn't know where he was. He walked in, heard him recording the song, and, oh, I'll get in on this. He goes in the booth, lay his vocals. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to erase this shit. It's, it's all said and done. Shit turned on hot. We kept it. And it's like one of the most popular things he's ever done. <laughs> Just walked into the cinema like, fuck it out. Yeah. What's this? Get a superstar like that, I'll sing. <laughs> Sounds alright. Do get fuck, I love him. I, love, I, I absolutely love this man. You love dirty as dirty, dirty as dirt dog. <laughs> how you see him is how you gonna get him. This is dirty, baby. It's a shame that ODB passed away, because if he was alive today, I can quite well imagine that he'd be selling empty boxes, labeled fucks, and randomly appearing in music videos like a cooler version of Nick Cage. I actually don't know what to do. Now we don't do like and subscribe, because this is new territory as far as YouTube is concerned. We are the first YouTubers to ascend to this level. We've ascended to like Super Saiyan 2 of the YouTube world, and we're just at it, and there's no one else fighting on our level. So they're all down there fighting for the scraps, telling people to smash that like button, while we're up here just waiting for an <laughs> opponent to ascend to our fucking level. I fucking love the analogy of using Super Saiyan to describe something. Basically, when I get drunk, a friend of mine and me have a shorthand way of conveying how drunk we are, and that is just to say what level of Super Saiyan we are. So base level is when you're sober, Super Saiyan 1 is when you're just a little bit tipsy, Super Saiyan 2 is when you're buzzed. 
And Super Saiyan 3 is when you're really, really drunk to the point where you want to dance. So that's when Goku's like, Rrr! when he gets all like primal, when he gets like the big gorilla ridge. Mm. Super Saiyan God is when you ascend to that level where you're drunk, but you can just like, do you know that point of drunkenness where you've become completely zen? That's that. That's that point of drunkenness when you're completely zen. And then Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan is when you're about to pass out because you're using too much power. And we get, we've workshopped so many like Dragon Ball analogies, how drunk you are. So there's the Super Saiyan where you get really buff, which is where Goku, it's the level of Super Saiyan before you get to Super Saiyan 2, where you just get super huge and buff and it makes you really slow. That's our way of saying, I'm so drunk, I want to start a fight. <laughs> We've also got there's, um, the Super Saiyan Ka uh, Kaioken, which is where you want to do shots. So you're Super Saiyan, but I want to do I want a Kaioken, because obviously you want to power up, let's do some shots. So yeah, people in the comments, come up with more Dragon Ball drinking analogies like those, because me and my friend use them a lot and they're really helpful. Which character in Dragon Ball is like considered the loser? Yamcha. When you're hung over, that's the Yamcha. Yamcha always dies. You can put a picture of it. He's got a famous thing with him dying where he dies like that on the floor. And that's when you're hung over the next day and you ask how you feel and it's either Krillin or Yamcha. Because Krillin always wants to fight and he's ready to drink again. Yamcha just fucking <laughs> decked on the floor. So when I'm hung over the next day, my mate will come in and just say, what level are you? And I'll go Yamcha and he'll know to make me a cup of tea. And the Dragon Balls are when you want to chat up a girl, because obviously you want to make your wish. Right. So how many Dragon Balls have you got? That's like how many balls have you got to go talk to this girl? When you get all seven Dragon Balls, you go over and talk to her. My advice to you, Carl, would be not to mention this to the girl. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I found it's a really good shorthand way of doing it, because me and my friends are a fan of the series. It's a really good way of... A shorthand way of like, how drunk you are? It's like Super Saiyan 3. He's oh, so you've drunk too much? Yeah, I need some water to calm down. So Why can't you just say I've drank too much? Because it's way cooler to say Super Saiyan. <laughs> So I'm curious about what the people in the comments can come up with, like other ways of doing it. Because there's so many levels. There's now a new level in Dragon Ball above that of a Super Saiyan God. And I think it's like called Ultra Instinct. And I don't even know what that could be.